Hello everybody and welcome back to Nine Lives Season 2 Episode 3, How to Start Running. We're on a roll now. Um, wanted to say thank you for the feedback on last week's episode all about willpower. Um, I've loved seeing your messages of uh, DMing me things that you don't want to do that you're going to do. Some really, like, really beautiful things actually. Applying for jobs, signing up for races calling your mum, having difficult conversations, going for runs in freezing minus two conditions. Absolutely incredible stuff, guys. So keep it up. Let's keep this momentum going for the year. Um, as we all know, a good life lies on the other side of doing the hard things. So we're going to continue to do the hard things. This week, um, we're going to be talking about something that I think is probably the most highly requested topic. Um, and I've covered in my episode Unfit to Ultra Marathons all about my own journey through running. Um, and I wanted to dedicate an entire episode to how to start running. Like how? Um, because my journey has been so, so many chapters to it now. Um, and just recently I, you know, I'm training for Paris Marathon. So I've gone from someone who just wanted to be able to run one kilometer to then five and 10 to completing a marathon and feeling really good about it. I mean, feeling absolutely incredible about it, actually, the fact that I could do that. And now I'm in a space where I am breaking it down more technically and I'm trying to get fast. And it's been the most beautiful journey for me to realize that I can run fast. Um, I, fast and I'll preface this whole episode with fast is subjective what's fast for me is probably someone else's recovery run and I see that on Instagram a lot these girls who have been athletes their whole lives and they're just busting out my race pace as their recovery pace but always when you're talking about your running journey or fitness journey wellness journey healing journey everything you have to exist in your own bubble of like this is my story and this is my experience and I'm trying to be better than yesterday. I'm not trying to be better than her or him or anybody else. I just exist in my own lane. And when you're racing, you're only racing yourself unless for some reason Kipchoge is listening to this, then you're probably trying to get a world record. But I don't think my audience are uh, Olympians. However, oh, there might be. But, you know, it's really important to remember that we all have different starting points and it's just so unfair to compare. So this whole episode, I'm going to be bringing it back to that, but I really want you to start off listening to this um, and these tools and learning more about running from the lens of I will, my performance will not be like Cassia's and Cassia's won't be like the next girl or the next boy and they won't be like someone else. So I think just allowing yourself to have a beautiful journey within your own self is really, really important. So yeah, I'm running Paris Marathon, which is on the 7th of April. I got a DM, <laughs> so hilarious. I got a DM from the London Marathon uh, a few days ago and I, that's a cursed race. And I said, oh, I'm never gonna do that race again. DM from the London Marathon saying, Cassia, would you please run this race? Um, obviously I do a lot of work raising awareness for mental health and exercise therapy for mental health. And they really like what I do and they've invited me to race and talk about that. Um, so I couldn't say no. So April, I have two marathons in one month. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna get through it together. I'm gonna obviously be doc documenting the whole thing. I think more than anything, just the recovery is gonna be really important and taking care of my mental health and my body and my sleep and making space for other things in my life. I'm way more time poor this time around. I, I can't fit in my training at the moment and I'm I'm not beating myself up, I'm just letting it happen. So anyway, that being said, we're gonna talk all about running and how to run and what it all means and how to begin your own journey. I wanted to start by telling the story of Pheidippides. He is the man who ran the first marathon, long story short. Uh, there was a big war between Persians and the Greeks. Um, Persia was a huge empire, much bigger than Greece, uh, and it wanted to capture Athens. The Greek soldiers waited on top of the hill while the Persian army waited on the plain of Marathon below. 
There were 48,000 Persian soldiers and only 10,000 Greek soldiers. The Greeks sent a messenger, Pheidippides, to Sparta to get help. He ran for two days over the mountains to ask the Spartans, but the Spartans would not fight until there was a full moon. I mean, I read that and I was like, makes sense. Absolutely, I go by the moon, so fine, Spartans. Pheidippides returned to Marathon alone. The Greeks could not wait and attacked the Persian army. The Greeks ran towards the enemy. Persian arrows flew through the air, but the Greeks won. 6,400 Persians were killed, but only 192 Greeks died. The Persians ran to their ships and tried to escape. They tried to go to Athens to capture the Greek women, children, and old people waiting there. Pheidippides now had another job. He ran 40 kilometers to Athens to tell the Greeks that they had won and to tell him that the Persians were coming. He arrived at the city gates very tired. Rejoice, we conquer, he shouted. And then he died. From this great event, the first marathon race of the modern Olympic Games was run in 1896. It was won by a Greek runner, Spiridon Louis, and like Pheidippides, a long time before, he also carried messages. He was a postman. I just think that's a wonderful story. And I've always wondered where, you know, the story of marathon comes from and what the word means and why we run 42.2, what a strange distance. But there is the story. Obviously, now we look after ourselves a lot better. So hopefully at the end of a marathon, we're not going to drop down dead. Um, but I think that's a really lovely story and I often think of that one when I'm running myself and doing these long distance races thinking of our ancestors running that far is really lovely um there's another saying I wanted to kind of preface this episode with that uh if you want to run run a mile if you want to experience a different life run a marathon and if you want to talk to God run an ultra and I mean you know, these things are kind of like, oh, drink the Kool-Aid in the running community. But I think there's a lot to be said for running and getting into this sport, for expanding your mind and expanding your life, your lifestyle and the possibilities for what you can put yourself through and what challenges you can go through, come up to and conquer. And it kind of seeps into every other aspect of your life as well. Um but with running, I truly believe, and even from a coaching perspective, that your mind is half the battle. The furthest I ran before running a full marathon was 20 kilometers, and then I ran 40. And the only difference was I had just decided that I would. Of course, there are physical limits, and not everyone can set out and are fit enough to run a kilometer, 510. I've obviously been in those shoes where I've had to really take a lot of time to uh, begin by walking and building up my health and aerobic base so that then I can go and I can do these runs. But if we're talking someone of sort of decent fitness levels, I think it's incredible how much the mind plays into how far and how fast we can run. For example, with my faster running recently, I had always, always told myself that I was a slow runner because I'd grown up unfit, because I'm covered in loose skin that's heavy and painful, because I was a smoker for 12 years, 10 years, um, and a heavy drinker, and I've got health things because of that, that lifestyle, and I always say, I'm not going to be a fast runner, I'm not going to be like these people who are incredibly fast, I just, that doesn't belong to me. And at the Ealing Half Marathon, I just got that thought out of my mind. And I said, well, what if you could try? What if you try? And I did. And I PB'd my half marathon at 148, which is, for me, breakneck fast. But again, you know, I had comments of people saying, oh, I ran my first half marathon. It was one hour and a half. OK, great. I've had to crawl through a lot of darkness to be able to even run a half marathon. So if you're listening and you, you know you're like, OK, well, I have this huge mountain to climb before I can even conceivably, you know, conceivably lace up a pair of running shoes. I hear you. Um, your story matters and, you know, your space in the running community matters a lot. Just by wanting to try, you belong with us. Um, and I hope that you feel included and, and that you feel like it's accessible for you as well. I like to see running as a metaphor for life. Um, and more and more as I get older and I lose people around me, um, I realize that 
we only get one shot at all of this, just one little shot at this human experience. And I hope that you can all see that within you, you have the power to grasp at dreams and turn them into things that you can physically touch. I hope you can see that when I speak about these ideas that they're not just ideas, not some distant, far off fantasy. It exists just on the other side of your front door and within you too. Some of us may have a head start. Some of us are like greyhounds, perfectly poised and without the marring of years of, mis of mistreatment of self. And they can race and race and race and run without a second thought, their legs stretching out like great springs. But for a while, I compared myself to these sorts of runners, thinking there was only one way to be a good runner or a proper runner, right? A real runner. For some of us who are a little slower to start, a little beaten up, maybe our coats aren't as shiny as the greyhounds and our gait isn't as fast, but we still deserve to run and to feel the freedom of it all. You have to remember that your body is a machine and some of our machines are different and require different things to run best. What I urge you to do is to never listen to anyone who is spouting out anything that feels kind of ableist. You know, this is your machine and there are certain people and certain groups of people who can't change things about themselves and so will be starting on a different platform. Also avoiding people who use language or rhetoric around runners looking or being a certain way. Anyone can be a runner. You have to do it. You have to do it anyway. Do it without the gear. Do it in makeup. Do it bare face. Do it sad. Do it happy. Do it when you aren't ready, but just bloody do it. I wanted to recommend a book because I am often asked about my favorite books, and this is probably top two of recent years, um, which is a book called What I Talk About When I Talk About Running, and it's by a lovely author whose, other, whose books I really enjoy, Haruki Murakami. I love his style of writing. I find his books really easy to read and this book especially, it's very small. So, but it's uh, all about the metaphor of running, which is obviously something I love. But he says, for me, running is both exercise and a metaphor. Running day after day, piling up the races bit by bit, I raise the bar. And by clearing each level, I elevate myself. At least that's why I've put in the effort day after day to raise my own level. I am no great runner by any means. I'm at an ordinary level, or perhaps more like mediocre, but that's not the point. The point is whether or not I improved over yesterday. In long distance running, the only, the only opponent you have to beat is yourself and the way you used to be. And I think it's just a lovely summary of those ideas. So, Let's move on to some running lingo. I think in the DMs, I can see that a lot of people are like, what are you talking about? <laughs> because like me, in the very beginning of my journey, I had never spoken to another runner before. I had never consumed a piece of running content. I didn't know what anything meant. I was just in the local park going a little bit faster than walking, thinking this feels really nice. Um, so my whole journey started as just being completely intuitive and it's only in the last year, I would say, that I've, yeah, since I ran London last May, London Marathon, I'd say from that point until now have I started taking running and racing seriously because I'd felt ready to do so and I'd felt ready to take on that information without it becoming overwhelming for myself. Um, and I think... As much as I love these races, I'll always be a trail running in a child mental health runner. That will always be my my biggest joy. And I don't know how long I will race for. For now, it feels great, but everything changes all the time, doesn't it? So who knows? But anyway, so I'm going to go into what different things mean, because I think this is something that's really valuable um, for a lot of people out there who might just not know what on earth we're all yammering on about. Um, so starting off hill repeats, um, this is something that I do a lot. It's one of my favorite training methods. Uh, it's basically a training run that incorporates repeatedly running up a hill or hills in preparation to run a race with a hilly course or to strengthen the legs. 
Um, this is something I do in France a lot, you know, the big hill. If you followed me from summer, you'll know the little skeleton friend at the top of the hill that I high five. Um, really good for strengthening legs, uh, really fun if you're a psycho like me and you like running up hills. I just love the challenge. Um, but yeah, if you were running a hilly course, that's something you would be doing to prepare. Intervals. Speed intervals are interspersed with periods of recovery, also called repeats. So this is one of the most popular methods of training. People are like, oh, I've got an interval run. It basically just means you're going fast, then slower, then faster, then slower. And your coach or whoever's programming you will be able to tell you what those paces are. For example, if I'm doing intervals, it usually looks like a warm up, uh, an interval of race pace, which would be one kilometer, one kilometer conversational, one kilometer weight race pace, one kilometer conversational, etc., etc. That's what an interval is. Um, an easy run. Loads of people hear this and I, people ask a lot like, what is an easy run? How can you decide if a run is easy? Any amount of running done at relatively low effort without a particular purpose, contrasting with, you know, tempo run, speed work, long run, etc., which I'll get into now. So easy is just basically keeping it, uh, relatively low effort. So that would be low heart rate, you know, slow pace, just easy turning over the legs, um, they are my favorite runs. <laughs> so long run, any run that is significantly longer than usual, done at a comfortable steady pace with the intention of building stamina. Most training plans call for one long run, run a week, typically on a Saturday or a Sunday. So for people in full-time work, like myself, it can be very difficult to fit long runs in and they often have to happen at the weekend. So you see a lot of people saying, you know, oh, it's long run Sunday, it's long run Saturday or, you know, um, gearing up for those big adventures and long run will be different for everybody. I have clients um, whose long run would be 5k. I have clients whose long run would be 15 or 50 <laughs> if they're doing some crazy ultra. Um, so this really depends on you and your um, training, where you are in your training. A long run for myself would be 30K, maybe a half um, in a marathon block. But if I'm training for something less, it would be less, you know. Um, long implies long, but long again is different to everyone. So it's really important never to compare your long runs to other people. Negative split is to run the second half of a run or race faster than the first half. Um, yeah, just basically means it also could be called a progressive run. So you start slow and your pace gets faster as you go along. A lot of people kind of refer to this in races of like, uh, I definitely a negative split that race, which means I got faster as it went along, which is the dream. Because that means that you've trained really well, you've tapered really well, and you know, you're getting faster as the race goes on. Speed work, which is any running workout that involves running certain predefined segments at a faster than normal pace, interspersed with periods of recovery, typically done in between warm up, cool down, also called intervals or track workout. So we've been through that, but that's just another word for it. Speed work is slowly becoming my favorite because the runner's high from that is chef's kiss. <laughs> um, a split is the time recorded for any specific segment of a run, race or workout. So yeah, everyone, what's your splits? So it would be what are your paces for each you know, segment of the run, basically. Strava, <coughs> people love that, looking at their splits. <laughs> Tempo run, a training run of a specific duration or distance done at a steady effort level, typically somewhere around a 10K race pace, hard but manageable. Warm up and cool down, we know, is just light physical activity done before or after longer or harder periods of activity. So those are just some lingo things to get your head around because I know that it can feel all very confusing and very strange so those are kind of the main pillars of what you'd be looking for in a running journey and running workout however the most important part if you are a complete beginner and the most important you know ingredient to this journey is grit and I and I I truly, I believe this so much. You don't need the gear and you don't need to know everything. It's really great if you want to educate yourself and you want to arm yourself with this um, information and knowledge. It's wonderful. But grit is something that is built 
through consistently showing up and going out on those runs that you don't want to go on. Grit is something that happens at mile 25 of, you know, a marathon, at 9K over 10K, at 4K over 5K. All of those training runs, the beautiful block of effort can carry you. But when the wall comes or when you have to call upon something more superhuman to finish, something greater than you deep within and yank it out of yourself, that is grit. And grit is built during the runs you don't want to be on. During the early mornings before work, getting in your miles, the lunch break sessions and the late night sessions, that is grit. And that is what carry will carry you through. Another thing to remember is how important it is to realize that we all need different plans. So I can't provide you, unfortunately, with a step-by-step guide, but I can give you the most important gem. And that is that you will never be ready. So just open the door. Running at first is awkward and strange. Your face will be red and hot. Your limbs will feel uncoordinated and you'll hate the fact it feels so unnatural. Where is this flow state everyone is talking about? This meditation through running Cassia goes on about. Well, at first it was impossible for me to. I was 95 pounds heavier and a heavy smoker. I had organs beaten down by booze and lungs that felt they couldn't breathe. Heavy legs, not used to movement. But hell, man, I was trying. And isn't that all there is to try? To know it will feel bad and do it anyway for the reward at the end. But I still remember it like it was yesterday, getting home from that first run and closing the door and smiling to myself and thinking, I did it. And it wasn't even a run. It was a walk jog, you know. I I don't know what it was. I don't think I even called it a run. I think I just said I'm going out. Um... But yeah, closing the door, leaning back on it and smiling at myself and saying, I did it. And I remember that was the first time I'd smiled properly in a long time with a smile that I thought at one point I'd never get back. Uh, And yeah, I just grinned and I said, same time tomorrow. But I have that same feeling now at the end of each race and sure they keep getting longer and I keep getting faster, but that feeling of getting home after that first ever run, that's the magic. So get out there, discover yourself. Um, There's so much to be learnt in the beautiful, beautiful art and joy of running. And I think the most important thing is, you know, everyone's journey is different and you don't have to be fast. You don't have to run for a long time but you could try and see where it takes you. So we're going to end on a poem, one of my favourite poems, which is all about not getting caught up in the mundane or procrastinating uh, and getting out there to live. And it's by Rose Milligan, and it's called Dust If You Must. Dust if you must, but wouldn't it be better to paint a picture or write a letter, bake a cake or plant a seed, ponder the difference between want and need. Dust if you must, but there's not much time, with rivers to swim and mountains to climb, music to hear and books to read, friends to cherish and life to lead. Dust if you must, but the world's out there, with the sun in your eyes, the wind in your hair, a flutter of snow, a shower of rain, this day will not come round again. Dust if you must, but bear in mind, old age will come and it's not kind. And when you go, and go you must, you yourself will make more dust. So how about we open the door and we get out there and stumble about and try? Um, Thank you for listening, beautiful friends. I hope that was useful. Any further questions, as always, just DM me and I'll cover them in future episodes. But I hope that was a little tidbit into the world of running and... I mean, we can delve much further in as the season progresses. So until next week, lots of love.